Oh, and I'm just the bass player in Monterey, but uh, we created the band, uh, my brother and I, back in 1974 as kids. And uh, been playing, this is the original trio that started back then, the drummer, guitar player, myself, uh, and have been playing continuously. We added five members in the 80s and uh, been playing professionally actually since we were kids. Wow. Yeah. It's hard for bands to stay together that long. Absolutely. You know, it's it's a lot like uh, a, a relationship with your wife. It's, you know, it's definitely a, a work in progress. So, yeah, musical relationships are, are delicate matters and most artists that are really good are, are sensitive, but even then, you know, there's a lot of very strong feelings about certain things and we've been fortunate, you know, we've been very fortunate. Uh, my, having work with my brother, uh, sometimes can be difficult because it's family, but it's also can be easier because we are a very close family. So you, you probably know songs upside down, backwards and forwards. I mean, you said you don't necessarily, when, when you all have time you rehearse, is that, how does that all work out? Well, since we've been playing since we were kids and have rehearsed, uh, you know, thousands of times literally over the years, uh, in the last few years, uh, we don't, uh, most material we don't rehearse ahead of time. Sometimes we do. But generally, we just uh, we know we arrange the music individually. Uh, my brother typically will do the orchestration side because you know we use a computer with our performances over the last 20 years. We were one of the first uh, sequencing bands, and now we use samples, etc. So uh, all the keyboards and strings and horns that you hear are all we orchestrate them actually, and then a computer plays them synchronized with what we play uh, when we perform live. And so, all right, wow. So. Um, what, do you have a, like, what, what made you want to start and, and do this? I mean, what, what made you want to start a band? Yeah, it was just uh, the love of music. It's, it's like sports with kids. Uh, I mean, we like sports also. We were kind of a weird dichotomy family. My dad actually played professional baseball, but my grandfather was a professional musician. And so we, we, we had a, a love, I think that's why I play racquetball uh, for s sports, uh, but uh, music when we were young really dominated our lives and actually pushed sports aside. We did the typical sports things when we were kids, Little League and that kind of thing, high school sports a little bit, but by the time we were in high school we really were playing so much music that uh, that music uh, became uh, our predominant uh, priority in life, I guess, and we actually went to school, studied music also at the conservatory in Chicago and IU, so on and so on. So we've studied music uh, and taken it seriously and, and, and play, played professionally for all those years, uh, often doing as much as 48 uh, weeks a year of performing. Often, many times, five nights a week. <laughs> Gee, whiz, that's a lot of work, man. And then that's your main, that's your main bread and butter. I didn't know what you did for. A yeah, no, industry. actually, it wasn't for me. Uh, I was a public administrator most of my career. Now I have my own consulting business. But my brother has been a professional musician since he was uh, basically 16 years old and has made a living uh, uh, all those years and, and plays uh, not only with me but plays professionally uh, on his own as a solo act. But we've also done all kind of other work uh, for commercials and uh, recording. Uh, we owned a recording studio for a while and did a lot of production, post-production work, all that kind of thing. So we've covered a lot of the areas of uh, contemporary music. Uh. Do, you, do you have like now, do you have a favorite song or a favorite genre that you said contemporary music? But is it the favorite song, first of all, favorite song? No, you know what? I really don't have a favorite song. I, I kind of... Uh, uh, aspire to the, the philosophy of Duke Ellington, which is there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. And so I literally love everything from, you know, uh, the classic uh, Baroque era music uh, to modernist uh, classical music. I'm a big jazz lover from, you know, Jelly Roll Morton to the contemporary artists of today. And I love pop music. I grew up, you know, on, on the British invasion and the heavy metal music. Uh, so, and blues actually. Our first little band as kids was a blues band, believe it or not. I grew up in the inner city, so I was blessed enough to have uh, a lot of friends who influenced us in blues, and so we were really a blues band. Uh, and our first keyboard player actually was a, was a blues keyboard player that ended up uh, with a Jackson 5. <laughs>
<laughs> right oh my of, gosh! From our band. Oh wow! Well, you know, <laughs> he, he really graduated. <laughs> Boy, I guess so. I, it, it's not. I mean, that's pretty amazing. But it's not. I suppose too too surprising since you guys all studied music. That's amazing. Um, and 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 like you said, yeah, the British invasion. Um, let's get back to the whole. Uh, uh, career aspect of it all. I mean, the, the whole work day, I, I, so to speak. It's not obviously. It's not a typical one for for you guys than anyone else would be. I mean, it's not five days. I mean, you know, it's not nine to five. It's absolutely. You know, uh, you know it's, the arts are a passion and and they're a dedication. It's, I often I would equate it when I was younger to the priesthood. I mean, you really, it's a passion and it's something that uh, you f you get a lot of pleasure from. And, and and I always I remember older musicians telling me. When I when I we would talk discuss music and what it meant for someone's life, they said you know the money unless you're because you can uh, the average musician doesn't usually do too well surviving it's the superstars that are very wealthy so there's very little middle ground for artists we've been fortunate we've kind of found that middle ground uh, but uh, I remember the old musician saying how many people can do good work and then have a whole crowd of people applaud them for their good work. It's not very many people in any career, be it professional, whatever, will get a crowd, a large crowd, to uh, you know very visibly and enthusiastically uh, applaud your work for what you did. So we're, you know that's kind of an extra blessing that you don't get in many uh, in many careers in life. So I, and it, so I, and that's not that, that's not the reason we did it, uh, but but it is an extra. Uh, benefit, I think, uh, for the psyche to be able to, to know very quickly whether you did good work or not. <laughs> well, no, that uh, d definitely is a, uh, an indicator, obviously. Um, <laughs> let's break today down for you, because you've been doing this for, I don't know how long you've been playing music, you know, just for, you know, for, for all the racquetball players when they're all done with the tournament and everything, but I mean, that's got to be rewarding, right? And then, but let's, I mean, because you probably got here early, and, and, and just, just this interview, we, were, we had to just barely squeeze this one in because between our playing schedules and then you have to go set up, so let's, let's run that down today. Yeah, no, I, uh, uh, I was working, I worked last night actually till about one in the morning, and then I uh, was up at six, six, 35 or so. I try to sneak every minute I can get in. And then I was here at quarter to set, quarter to eight. And then I had my first match a little after eight o'clock started. So I'll go till at least five or six tonight, rush home, uh, change clothes, and uh, a shower after I finish playing. And uh, and change clothes when I get home and, and uh, pack up the gear and leave uh, to set up at eight o'clock at the club. So we hit, we hit stage at nine. That's... Uh, that's in my day. It will be. Uh, we finish at 1 a.m. and we pack up, and I'll probably be in bed about 3 in the morning. That's that's my day. <laughs> Good lord! So that adds up to how many? I mean, like what? Uh, 20 almost. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot of hours. There are a lot of hours. But you know, again, you know, when you love your work, you know, you, time flies by. And you don't feel like you're working that much. I mean, it it is hard playing a racquetball tournament in several divisions. Uh, and I'm not, a, I'm not a kid anymore, obviously, but that's one of the reasons I can do it, I think, is because I play racquetball, and it keeps my, my, my body so fit. No, that's great. That's an excellent answer. I'm going to adjust this here real fast. Um, and, uh, all right, so, and then, uh, I, uh, let's see, what other questions I want to ask you? Is there anything else you'd like to add, or...? Uh, n n I don't think so, except that, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, other, uh, just a little sidebar on the benefits of racquetball that, uh, besides the health side, is that I've met a lot of good people like yourself and many others that I've met over the years. Uh, it is a great game. It's a, it's a team sport also, but there's a lot of camaraderie, as you know, and so I really enjoy that about racquetball. You know, it's healthy, it's, it's, uh, and it's uh, communal. That's cool. That, that's neat. Uh, um, to mention that because uh, I, I feel the same way, um, and and it must add an extra layer of satisfaction to be able to go and play with the, your friends, you know, play racquetball, the sports you love with your friends, and then go on stage and entertain them later. I mean, is it, what, what part of that whole thing is is rewarding to you? Oh, you, you know, it's just uh, again, it's it's our uh, love of music, but to have friends that you know you you play racquetball with. I see these guys because I play four or five days a week usually, sometimes more. Uh, don't tell my wife no. No, she knows, but uh, she encourages me. It's better than, than going to the local bar, you know, <laughs> which I, I wouldn't do anyway. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun uh, because all the, uh, the, uh, 
the the racquetball participants come out. Not all, but a lot of them do, and and uh, other fan. A lot of our fans are there also, of course. So it's a, just a fun night, you know. And and the racquetball people, I I have learned this, uh, that they like to have a great time, and so it's a lot of fun playing uh, for the tournament because it's just such a nice crowd, and you get everybody just like on the in the racquetball courts. I mean, they're very competitive. But it's a, a good. It's a good. Uh, it's a good. You typically a really good person that that uh, I've run into playing racquetball, and then they, they just come out and have fun. And so it's just again that real extension of the communal thing. Where now we now we after a hard day's work on the, on the racquetball tournament, we're uh, having a few drinks, some food, and dancing and having a good old time. I, I think that's pretty much what I've got. Is there is there a special part of of performing that you like? I mean, when you're up on stage, is there is there a special feeling that you get when, when you know? Because I noticed that the last time I saw you guys played, you, you interacted with the crowd a lot. A lot of you know, you you, you let the, the crowd sing along and everything. And I mean, that's got to be special. But is there a, a one thing that you really really enjoy about playing? Well, you, you know, uh, the performing arts is about a chemistry between you and your audience. And when that really good chemistry develops, we, we feed off each other. The crowd, you know, encourages your uh, performance, and they enjoy it immensely. So there's there's a chemistry that that, that can, if it occurs is very special, and it's uh, doesn't happen every time. And you know, it's like anything else; you can't perform uh, at a certain uh, at the highest level every time. You you try to keep, maintain a high high standard, and most of the time you can hit it. But some nights are really special, so you kind of. The, when you have those special nights, you never know what they're going to happen. You know, they just, they all, you know, everybody because every musician is a little different, the temperament, etc., that's going on in their lives and how they're able to perform. But if all those parts are fitting right and the crowd is feeling it, it's there, there's a magic about it. You know, even at a local or at the levels that we play, which is mostly nightclubs and casinos and that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, yeah, that that that's kind of. Uh, what I really enjoy when it does happen, because it's just such a neat chemistry that uh, that that's beyond almost description. 